Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm very pleased and of course very proud that I can participate in such a prestigious uh, conference. Uh, unfortunately, I could not join you yesterday. But, uh, but today, with a great interest, I listen to, to all the presentations and I have to admit that right now I'm getting more and more fascinated by the idea of open knowledge, of, of open data. Uh, and at the beginning, please let me um, confess one thing, because um, the problem of open data and also of open knowledge uh, is the one that uh, interests me rel relatively recently because it focused my attention when I was uh, analyzing totally different issue because uh, in February this year at the Faculty of Law, University of Białystok, um, I defended my, my PhD thesis entitled Transfer of Intellectual Property from University uh, to Economy. So um, I analyzed the provisions of um, Law on Higher Education uh, act uh, in relation to the direct and indirect forms of uh, commercialization. So, process closely um, connected with the business management that focus on um, on profits. So, generally, um, financial ones uh, that can be derived from the from the R and D uh, findings. And today, the topic of my presentation is open data or commercialization, Polish universities' perspectives. But right now, I know that I should add um, that it would be also lawyer, young scientist perspective. And I know that most, most of you here um, have, um, have more technical profile. Yes, so um, I hope that that would be kind of a short introduction to, to legal basis and, and maybe continuation of, uh, of prior presentation of Mr. Krzysztof Siewicz. And in the first part of my uh, presentation, I would like to um, present legal solutions uh, introduced by the Polish legislature uh, to, to facilitate transfer of intellectual property from economy from university uh, to, to economy. Uh, I took into account uh, provisions of um, Higher Education Act um, after the last amendments that, uh, that came into force on 1st October uh, 2014. And uh, right now, Polish universities uh, face a challenge of adopting um, to the requirements of knowledge-based um, economy, uh, entrepreneurship, also competitive uh, markets and they are compelled to move from this uh, classical Humboldtian model of university uh, to um, something what is called third generation uh, university. So the mission of teaching, of uh, research right now extends to cooperation with social economic environment um, which also includes transfer, uh, transfer of knowledge. Uh, and these changes have been uh, reflected in the, in the legislation. So right now, please have a look what assumption um, of transfer of knowledge um, arises from the uh, Polish legal acts from, from the law on higher education. And so, um, with a view to fostering um, use of the intellectual potential um, <laughs> All the higher education or the higher education institutions uh, may establish uh, academic business incubators, technology transfer centers, and special purpose uh, vehicles. So here we've got those um, intermediaries, those brokers uh, that uh, Mark mentioned before. Uh, the Senate uh, of uh, higher education institution um, should also adopt internal regulation to govern the um, intellectual property rights management, as well as the uh, rules for the commercialization of R&D findings. And uh, articles 86D, 86I, they uh, contain assumptions for the model of com uh, commercialization of R&D uh, findings. Generally speaking, uh, Polish public universities uh, are obliged to uh, within three months to decide on, on commercialization. Uh, if not, they should uh, transfer IP rights back on, uh, on employee. 
So after the, the evaluation of um, employees' uh, disclosure of the of the commercial uh, for the commercial possibilities, uh, universities, when it's possible, of course, they license uh, the R and D findings or or just create uh, create a spin-off. Uh, and if this kind of, for example, invention is uh, successfully um, commercialized, so cash royalties um, uh, collected by a university uh, is after that um, sharing between the uh, university and, and the employees. The, the general rule is 50-50, uh, so um, the cash royalties are, are First uh, half is di distributed to university and the other for the for the affiliated um, creators. And my opinion is uh, that the natural consequence of uh, commercialization is, of knowledge is just a creation of uh, monopoly. I mean that uh, knowledge right now is is only for for the uh, chosen few. And in fact, the, the natural, the final aim is we should we should call just uh, money. Mm, so profit for for the author. Of course, it, after that, it should be intended for the uh, further development of, of knowledge. But uh, but most often, this is a simply a, an additional source of income uh, for the scientists. And of course, this is a more uh, general uh, problem. Um, I think that we will all agree that generally the underfunding of Polish educational scientific system is the main problem, for example, to, to, to develop the, the idea of uh, open, uh, open knowledge, because first we think about the money and after that about the profits that society can derive from, from uh, our findings or, or just the general um, progress. And right now, as I mentioned, we we are in a moment of uh, of transition. University tries to uh, university tries to adapt to, to new requirements to the amended uh, law of higher education, and uh, here comes uh, the new set of requirements uh, from policy makers. Because uh, Polish universities uh, are part of European higher education uh, system. So the, the aim is to benefit from the, from the program horizon uh, 2020. And uh, like right now, please um, let me tell you a few words about the, uh, the horizon, uh, about the assumption of, of horizon 2020. Its basic requirements is uh, open access, because uh, according to the European Commission, fuller and wider access to scientific publication and data helps to improve quality um, of results, it gives us greater efficiency from, from our findings, it also accelerates innovation just involve citizens uh, and society uh, in, in science. So not only open access to, to publications, but, but a novelty in Horizon uh, 2020 is the open research um, data pilot which aims to, to improve and maximize, maximize access to reuse of research data uh, generated by, by projects. Uh, this pilot will cover the variety of uh, thematic areas, uh, for example, future and emerging technologies, information, communication technologies, or science with and, and for uh, society. But uh, also variety, it will cover variety of data because um, the Commission uh, acknowledges that data generated by the uh, EU uh, funded projects is, um, is extremely uh, diverse. The open research data um, pilot uh, applies for the two general types of data. So uh, first of all, data needed to uh, val validate the results of, uh, of our uh, publications like for example, um, statistics, um, our interview recordings, or results, results of uh, experiments. But uh, also data that, that were pointed by the uh, beneficiaries, because uh, <coughs> all the beneficiaries will be able to, um, will be aided to choose which data they would like to, um, to make available in, in this open, uh, open access uh, mode. As far as possible, um, projects uh, must take measures to, to enable, for
for third uh, parties to to access, to mine, to to exploit the data uh, that that were put uh, in our um, researches. Uh, the Commission acknowledges also that there are valid reasons for not making data openly um, available, and uh, the one that is the most important and the, more in, in, the most interesting from my perspective is that uh, is the one that if participation in the pilot of open research data um, can be reasonably expected that, that those data can be commercially or industrially exploited or uh, for example if, uh, if the data uh, is, in, is in, incompatible with, uh, with existing uh, protection of uh, per personal data uh, policy. So uh, it's not the obligation, but we can take part, we, we can agree to, to take part in this um, pilot on open research data initiative. Uh, and uh, because I, I, I can hear that the, the, the clock is ticking, yes, so <laughs> I, should, uh, I should conclude. Uh, so of course, um, for, for, for obvious uh, reasons, um, it is too early to talk about uh, success or, or even about um, effects of uh, Horizon to to 2020 in, in Poland. But I think that it's worth um, to ask, um, are we legally, are we mentally prepared uh, to those new, uh, new requirements? Because um, I have in my mind, mind these last uh, amendments of the uh, law on higher education, which does not mention the possibility uh, to, to share the, the results uh, on, the, on this mode, on the, on the principles of, uh, of open access. And of, of course, we can imagine that, that for example, when, when the employee, employee who, who regain uh, the, the, rights, the rights under contract uh, with, with university, uh, after that he will decide to, to make uh, his um, R&D um, findings um, available uh, in, in this mode, but this is just a, a faculty, this is just the, just the option. So uh, it seems to me that uh, Polish university, university, universities uh, have insufficient knowledge about profits, um, that profits and benefits of policy of um, open knowledge, uh, of open access. And so I think that, that we should promote, we should continue this, this campaign and I, and I think that with this proposal and of course uh, with, with the best wishes of success for, the, uh, for, all, for, the, for all the participants, for, for organizers of, the, of this uh, conference, I would like to finish. So thank you very much and all the best. <laughs>